Thank you all so much for joining us today. We are going to be talking about traditional safe sleep using a cradle board. I'm so excited to have an expert with us and I will let her introduce herself to you. So Chest Chal Chal, uh, good day everybody. I'm Celisha Old Bull. I am from Arley, Montana. I am Salish and Crow. Um, I was raised with my mother who is Salish. And so I live on the Flathead Indian Reservation. Um, in another world, I'm a student success coordinator at the University of Montana. And I take classes on the side, trying to pick up a few pieces of education here and there. And um, in terms of being an expert, um, I would say I'm a, a cultural practitioner. Um, I know some things and I'm just uh, glad to be able to share them with you today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule. I know you're a mom as well. And so that is really demanding. And so I just want to say thank you so much um, personally, as well as on behalf of Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies and the state of Montana DPHHS department, um, as we really appreciate you taking time out of your day to speak with us. So with that, I'll go ahead and jump into some of the questions that we've gotten. And the first one is pretty simple. What is a cradle board? So a cradle board is a piece of wood and it's adorned with an animal hide or um, modern days, a lot of people will use cloth and it has a, um, it has a, a, por a piece of it where you can um, swaddle a baby onto the board and um, it's a only word I can think of. It's a, it's a traditional tool that um, tribal peoples use throughout Indian country, and they're they vary um, quite uh, have a large diversity in the style of these boards. But a cradle board is as a tool to help swaddle the baby. Great, thank you. So. Um how does it help keep baby safe? Because we recognize that this is a safe traditional sleep pattern, but how does it do that? How does it keep baby safe? Um, well, the way that I was taught is um, the board is um, really good for posture. Um, it's, you know, the babies are, or bones are really fragile. So it promotes um, really good posture. Um, in some cases, it'll promote um, a straight gait. Um, when the, so when the baby gets older, it won't be like feet will sticking out or sticking in like that. They'll have a straight gait. A lot of people don't use them anymore, but the ones that do it, um, because it's on a piece of wood, like this is one of um, the boards that I made, but it, um, the board can prop. So you would prop it like at an angle mm -hmm. and um, it's meant to prop so that you can walk away and, and the baby will be intact um, and protected because um, uh, this part up here, this is a Salish board. And um, let's see, I need to take this part off. My husband, we had these stored because my kids are kind of old now. It's beautiful. Um, that is absolutely beautiful. So this part right here um, is uh, how the baby is put in there. And um, uh, most of the time, they're partially swaddled before they're set in and then they're laced into there. It's looser at the bottom here. So their feet have room to be up or whatever. And um, there's room on the side that arms would be, you know, flush mm -hmm. with their body. Mm -hmm. you would never put them like this. And um, it's it just uh, protects them. It's a swaddling. It's a, it's a very secure swaddling. You never really, like, hold it up like that because mm -hmm. of their legs and their, their, their little guts. But um, kind of always meant to be, like, it's like a traveling... Uh, bassinet or like a traveling 
um, crib or yeah, well, this part up here protects the head and some boards, um, not this board, but I think it's more dependent on like family or tribe. Some, some people will put this stick that goes around right here, kind of up. And um, so if ever the board were to accidentally like go fall in that way, for some reason with nobody was like around the board, um, that stick is supposed to catch before the baby hits. So they wouldn't hit, they would hit the stick and not the baby. So nice. that's the, the safety parts. <laughs> no, that's great. That's, that's really helpful. And it looks like it's really sturdy. So it keeps baby from rolling over or anything like that. So that's great as well. Um, so you talked a little bit about how you properly use when you talk about how the feet need to be a little bit looser. Um, what other things um, should people know about how they properly use a cradle board? I guess it's it's like any tool that um, is helpful to a parent or a, ter a caretaker or a mother. Um, one of the basic ones for me that I found super useful was um, I breastfed. And so instead of um, jarring the baby around after I got done breastfeeding, sometimes if I knew I was going to like just have to go or have to get up and do something, I would put the baby in the board and then um, breastfeed from here. And then the baby can go to sleep um, in the board. Another, it's, it's really good for them to be sleeping in it. Um, babies are like uh, puppies. So they jerk around and even when they're awake, you know, they kind of, they have this little tendency to kind of like throw their head or whatever. And so if you um, secure them, either when they're sleeping or even when they are awake, a lot of times, well, babies, they don't really like to be like tied down when they're awake. I mean, some of them, they'll be used to it because they um, like that feeling of security but it um, helps with their demeanor. So um, the proper way I think would be while the baby was sleeping or if you were trying to calm the baby down sometimes and uh, only if they were like really used to the board, I think it would be a good tool to like wrap them up. They like that. They like that feeling, that snug feeling even when they're awake. And um, like the bottom of um, this board and I think a lot of boards, it has an extension, like the wood comes down right here. Mm -hmm. So if I have the board um, like propped on one knee and I have to hold it high because I get the computer kind of high, but I can use that um, board like a rocking. Oh. So, if, yeah. so I'm trying to um, soothe the baby and I wanted to do a little bit of rocking at works. Um I, we prop it. That's a proper way. It can be propped either up against and you would prop it kind of just kind of like, like this, but not too far up to protect their body. And um, I don't ever really recall like laying the baby flat. I wouldn't really ever lay the baby like flat, flat or like upside down. Like I would always kind of have it like any, any angle like this. And it usually works pretty well. And um, also just being aware of um, how many layers you have around the baby because they get hot, just mm -hmm. like we get hot. So like the only thing that I usually put around because they already have clothes on and especially in the summertime, um, I'll just put one very small receiving blanket to hold their arms. I wrap it around their, um, their arms to hold their arms down from like coming up like that um I wouldn't put like a whole bunch of layers around the baby because then they just get overheated and then that's not good either but this hide you know because it's an animal hide well this hide is deer hide um provides a lot of insulation for them and even in the summer it's it's also a good um thickness so so once the baby's in the cradle board, 
wh where do you go? So if you're using it to sleep, um, do you, you lay it next to you? Do you, you prop it on a pillow? How would you use it for safe sleep? I would um, put it on something secure at nighttime. If there's like two of us, like if we're sitting in a crowded space, like the board will put across two of us and I just lay it, lay the board like that. Or if we're doing something, I find a good secure, um, like either a corner or a wall or like a, like a couch or floor surface type of thing where it will grip. Um, where I know it's not going to like fall down mm -hmm. and I pop it up. Sometime I'll put a pillow underneath um, and just set it like on the bed or on the floor or something. But where it's not going to fall, I put it where it's going to be. I know it's not going to fall. I don't set it on something unsecure. So where do you, where did the tradition of cradle boards come from? At least for you. And we recognize that obviously everything varies by tribe and by region and things like that. So we understand that this may not be um, universal, but as an expert, like in your tradition, where did it kind of come from? Well, for me, I, I understand. I don't know of an origin story about the board, but I do know like traditional purpose. And that was, um, you know, because how we lived and how we sustained was um, always outside or how we traveled and um, after we got a horse, you know. In any case, there was a way to um, sort of have a safe way to transport your child. Um, people who are really skilled horse riders um, would put the baby um, sometimes on the the horn of the saddle. I was trying to think what that's called. And they would use something like this um, strap. And um, if it was walking, which walking is a pretty big transportation mode, um, that strap can be put across right here and the baby would be facing back that way. And um, if you were working, you could um, put the baby by a tree or either that or there was a way to safely secure them with the strap. And I don't know how they did that, but have the tree. And I kind of doubt that they did that actually, cause I don't, I wouldn't. But then I wouldn't put my baby on a horse horn, a saddle horn either. But anyways, <laughs> it was all about um, being able to continue to uh, do what you needed to do for your daily um, work for your family, you know. So if you were up in the woods or if you were um, outside doing something for a long time, I mean, you kind of had to have a way to protect your baby from the elements, you know, so, and the babies like it, they like being swaddled, so. Um, Great. Yeah, that's, that's what I know about the, like, the beginning, of, and it was actually made out of a whole piece of a tree before, um, so somebody would have carved it out of a, a big solid piece of wood from a tree it would have been a whole entire carving it reminds me of a boat or something but and and the other thing too is as time had went by the board got bigger so that's an attestment to probably um mode of travel i'm guessing um and cultural evolution um yeah, I was told that the board was a lot shorter. So this board, um, when when I made this one, it was, uh, um, I took it from a ratio. I took I took a picture and I measured or I rate I estimated the ratio of how big the board would be from the picture, and then I I used it that way. So this is more um, reflective of probably the more recent um, size of boards that are tribe used. Nice. So. Wow. That's amazing. So where did you learn to use a cradle board? 
Um, I learned from a couple. There is another style of swaddling that uh, is used way more often than, than the cradle board, and that's called a moss bag. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if everybody calls it a moss bag, but that's what um, Salish tribes call that bag. And it's it's like, um, imagine just this laced up part mm-hmm. without the board. Oh, okay. And no, the no, no headpiece. So it would just be like this laced up thing that you put up around the baby and then you wrap it up. And so they're really laced in. My mom and a lot of family members, um, because a board is a really complicated process, um, a lot, a lot, a lot of people all over Montana, all over Indian country will use those moss bags. Mm -hmm. And that's how I learned first was um, that moss bag was something very similar to the cradle board. It has all a lot of the same purposes except for like you can't like pop a baby with it or nothing it's just like a wrap um but the concept of it and some of the things that it's meant to promote like um I don't know if I had mentioned like um the the sleeping it helps a baby Mm -hmm. sleep better Mm -hmm. and um I mean just like the health the health part of it, you know, it's, uh, th- there's no like doctor that come and told anybody, but it's, it's just a really a secure feeling for the baby to be swaddled. Um, my mom was the one that, um, really told me a lot when I was younger. And then as I got older, um, a, an actual cradle board. So like this one, um, these end up being heirlooms. So my kids, um, if they don't want to, they don't have to go make another board date. I, I'll give it because this will belong to one of my kids and, and my child can take this and it's still usable. It's, there's, it's not like you don't, I mean, it's not broke. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's so incredibly usable. And uh, so if they have a kid, they could use this board for their kid. And um, there's some families that will take care of a board long enough where it will go through a couple of generations of kids like that. Because mm-hmm. you can only use it for a certain period of time. But my um, husband, um, his mom taught him how to construct a board. And so the combination of um, his knowledge and my mom's knowledge and then because his mom had um, way more kids than my mom did. His mom knew how to use the board really well. And so he knew how, um, he, know, he knew how to do, put, keep the baby in the board or put the baby in the board. And he knew how to, you know, you actually utilize the board. And I had never, I had never had that um, experience. So kind of learned from different people. Um, his mom, him, and then my mom, and so that's we really beautiful, to though, to have to have a cradle board be something, especially in your family where your husband can make it and then you can use it and pass it along. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. Um, you mentioned there are there's only a limited time you can use a cradle board. So, what ages really are a cradle board for? Like, when do you stop using the cradle board? So you can use the board from the time they're born until they grow out of it. So if you make a small board, um, the baby probably won't even get to use the board by the time. Like if you wait too long to use the make the board, and uh, there's a taboo that goes with that. And um, I really recommend, um, like, to my peers, like my peers that um, other Native people who um, are really inquisitive about wanting to have a board. Um, A lot of tribes have a taboo of you're not supposed to have possessions prior to your baby being born. So you're not supposed to buy anything for the baby. Like you can right before, like you get like a little um, going home kit you know like you have like a few clothes and a few diapers but then 
either you know i don't know you acquire all of it afterward um mm-hmm. and uh, our tribe is like that um but it's more a matter of whether somebody um still practices that because some a lot of people don't even um acknowledge that anymore but the ones that do the board is a part of that and so they will think well i can't have a board until after baby is born but um that was one of the things that i was super um curious about and my uncle um he's over 70 years old i had to go ask him because uh, you know you you have to go find your elders at that point and see what's acceptable. Um, I asked him the question of how am I supposed to have a board for my baby? You know, because it takes so much time to make the board. Um, how am I supposed to have that before baby grows out of it? And so then he said that was one of the very few things that you could start working on while you were still pregnant. Is you could... Um, like mine, because there's some things that are super optional. Like um, mine has all of this work on top of it. Um, that's what I wanted. I wanted to have this work and it's not even a complete one because usually a board will have um, our style of board and, and a lot of other tribes too. It'll have a cover that goes over the top of that as a decorative piece. And um, I never I never got that far. And um so I was able to have the board completed, I think two weeks after my first kid was born. So I had it from that. And then I was trying to remember how old. He was really old when I stopped using it. So it's however long you make this thing and however much give right here, because you could open this up quite a ways, um, however much give in Amala. Um, people really um, have a lot of nostalgia with their kids when when they raise their infants in a board that the baby is really accustomed to the board and so the baby uh, finds a lot of comfort in it and so as the baby gets older um, if the parents never um, cease using that uh, this part this wrapping part as a way to like swaddle them because you could swaddle babies in different ways but if they never quit using the wrapping part as a soothing method um, the baby could be like real old before they quit <laughs> or they quit using it and sometimes their legs will be sticking way out like that the baby when they start getting verbal they'll like request to be in the board and um I don't know if they sleep in it still but I've seen it I've seen some pretty big babies and their legs are way out there (laughs) so (laughs) I think it's up to the parent how long they want to they want to but um a lot of times if the parent wasn't really prepared to have that board as a part of their daily routine um they'll just use it for very temporarily and then they don't use it. It ends up being a decorative piece in their house or gets put away or whatever. So it's really up to the family and the baby and how, how they choose to um, really um, include the board as a part of their baby routine. You mentioned that your board has that really decorative piece. Um, What are some things that distinguish like, a cradle board from another that you could um that might be different tribally or regionally or things like that we created the design i and my husband created this design um we were we were looking at old photographs that um has beadwork from our tribe and then then we were inspired and then we put those type of um design floral designs back here Mm -hmm. excuse me we had um uh known that this type of design is um you'll find it on on a lot of regalia in old pictures or um, even current times a lot of people will make their regalia designs out of this type of floral design 
Um, and so our tribe, uh, we use this or we use um, like a real simple geometric style. Mm -hmm. And a long time ago, you used to be able to tell where somebody was from based off of the way that they designed their clothes, um, the way the clothes were constructed. And so that's the other piece is the construction of the board. Um, so each tribe is different and each tribe is also um, different in things that uh, would adorn the board. So some tribes, um, like I think maybe Crow, um, like on the back here, they would keep the belly button after it fell off and they sew that up into a decorative pouch. So you don't even know there's a belly button in there. That's an extension of yourself. And um, they put that onto the board. And then um, it's a decorative piece. And there's a lot of tribes that do that, not just clothes. We, I don't think we do that, but that custom is a part of what we do for babies. Mm -hmm. And then, um, also, like I said, like, uh, this is missing a piece that's a really decorative piece. I don't know how people would have time to, I, I couldn't even really get the one part done. Um, that is uh, another part of what would make this from here, from um, Salish. Um, our cousin tribe, who is a part of our um, reservation and our tribe is um, the Ponderay. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have they have quite a bit of similarities to us. So you, I don't think you'd be able to tell us apart in terms of like construction of a board. And then, like I said, some families they would put a um, a thing that goes across here, mm -hmm. and then that that serves a couple of purposes because some um, dangle stuff off like the way you would in. Uh, a, mob a mobile other tribes they have other really specific um really specific telltale things that have to be included on a baby's board like um because there's such a huge tribe it's it's easy to hear some of their stories but like the navajo or they like to be called the dene mm -hmm. they have they have a way of constructing their board that if you looked at the board and if you understood the tradition of their cradle board, you would, at first glance, you would know whether that baby was a boy or a girl. You wouldn't have to ask at all because the board would tell you if the baby was a boy or a girl because of um, the way that the board is uh, constructed. So they have, and then some tribes, they'll just do it different. There's so many, many, many different ways though. Right down to um, the covering, it's there's a lot of different meanings to these. So oh, it's really important to um, just ask each person, you know, which custom they follow. Like myself, I said in the beginning, I'm Salish and I'm Crow. Mm -hmm. Well, my mom, my mom is Salish. I grew up on Bahad Indian Reservation. And, and so a lot of those type of motherly customs I know are Salish and um so i'm familiar with that and so i tended to raise my kids or take care of my kids in that way but i know like um crows they would have a lot of other or a lot of different recommendations or suggestions or things that you do and um people like to incorporate a lot of um contemporary designs into what they do because um cultures evolve and mm -hmm. so people like modern ideas and you never know what you're gonna find on the what kind of decorations you're gonna find on the baby board sometimes <laughs> what tips would you give to someone who was a new user to a cradle board what would you tell a new mom who wanted to use a cradle board um the main one I know and I guess it's just because I had to really come to terms with it is um 
I think I was offended and that's what happened. And then I, I just, I mean, I got over it and then I understood it, but um, I've heard of moms wanting to use a board and either took the board to the doctor or, um, you know, for an appointment or whatever, or said that they're using a board and the doctor would say, um, that's not good. You're going to cause your baby hip dysplasia. And um, yeah, that was really offensive to me because I thought, no, <laughs> like if not if you're using it right, not, I mean, you wouldn't like put the baby so, you wouldn't strap the baby in so tight that you're going to really cause much of anything. Um, they're, they're growing bodies, you know, uh, this is a really um, flexible, this is a super flexible, if so you can see my thumb. Oh, yeah. Um, it does secure them because they're laced in, they're laced in there. I mean, when you put them in there, I have like a thing and in the back, there's, there used to be a padding, we took it out, but um, there's like a padding that you can put in there to protect them from the wood. And um, it protects their head and everything. But I would say for moms to um, take the baby out of the board sometimes, like you don't have to leave the baby in there all the time. Um, I don't agree with the medical part. I mean, I know there's like a fear or whatever, but um, this is something that we've done for many, 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 many years, you know? And so um, I really feel like, um, like I had a baby that was really colicky and it was a really good thing for me to have this board, you know? And um, I think my number one tip would be to give the baby a break from the board every now, you know, I do the other normal things like giving them tummy time or whatever, the different things that you would do for a baby. Um, but um, in terms of like their security, I mean, it's, it's so, so good. Uh, and then the other thing is just paying attention to my husband always used to get worried that, um, we were putting too much weight on certain parts of their body. That would be my other advice is just to really pay attention to um, how the baby is propped, um, like paying attention to like the same things that, that you do as an adult. So if you can't sleep a certain way, why would you try to make your baby do that? Mm -hmm. um, if you can, yeah, so really being aware of their body temperature, really being aware of their... Um, uh, angle that they're situated um those are the those are my main pieces that I think are pretty important so then other than not judging <laughs> a cradle board <laughs> from an outsider's perspective what tips would you give someone who was working with a mom who wanted to use a cradle board so um, if I was a, a home visitor or a home nurse or um, a doctor or something like that and I was working with a mom who used a cradle board what recommendations would you provide me so that I could make sure that I never offended someone like you were offended Oh, I mean, I would just say, you know, some of the stuff I just said before about mm -hmm. um, paying to the attention, paying, that sounded funny, paying attention, being aware of the tension of the laces. Mm -hmm. um, that's very important because you don't want to make it so tight, you know, you, you make it just enough so they're swaddled and um, being aware of their feet. That's always a really good thing. Um and like just re repeating like number of layers, like mm -hmm. being aware of um, the weather or the inside environment as a, as um, com opposed or compared to how many layers you got going on here because um, they really do it like it really can get too hot and they don't like that, you know. And mm -hmm. I mean, if you're wondering why the swaddling is not working, well, cripes, how many clothes, how many things you got going on there? <laughs> like you gotta gotta make sure they're not gonna get hot you know because they will and then they won't want to go to sleep or be swaddled or nothing that's be mad at you but, um <laughs> uh those are the main things and um also um just knowing that well like we was um i think this is a type of really sturdy plywood but on the back here um 
you can see that there's a you can see the wood back there we usually have this padding that we put and that's something I think is really vital to um, pay attention to because that padding um, protects their head and it protects their you know their body and uh, just make being aware of that too like um, the amount of padding that you're putting between the board and the baby and making sure that they're protected in that way. I mean, those would be the main advices I would give. Great. Well, I don't have any other questions for you. Is there anything else that you think would be important that I didn't ask? Um, I don't think so. Jeez, I don't recall ever talking this much about a board. <laughs> no, no yeah. it, I appreciate it so much. Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies appreciates it so much. Uh, Montana, the providers there appreciate this so much. Again, this was a direct request from people that said, hey, this is great, but I don't know anything about Cradle Boards Help. And so thank you, thank you, thank you so much for spending time with me and answering the questions and really just sharing your wisdom. It's so amazing to learn about um, um, all of the different parts in your culture and tradition and it's just so beautiful and I just want to say thank you so much. I really appreciate your time.